Well, you know, um, I thought I'd do another another recording here. Uh, this one is about thirty minutes long, but I'll I'll just do you know whatever I want to whatever I want to talk about. I don't really give a shit about the gameplay. Oh, this is this is the um, I recorded one last week, and but this uh, I'm, I must have you know. This this is the one I recorded tonight for no reason, but uh, you know, screw it. What 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 do I want to talk about? Um, I wanted to talk about a topic that is near and dear to not only my heart but a lot of my friends too that I know, people that I know. Um, this whole fucking Taliban fucking swap for Bo Bergdahl. Um, if you don't know, we swapped five of the most high-risk, most dangerous Taliban commanders for one dude who was captured in 2009. And, um, if you don't know, these five guys have been in Guantanamo Bay since about 2002, I believe, most of them. And um, if you don't know who they are, well, the State Department would have would have you believe that they're the most dangerous people in the world. But and you know they they might not be far off. But um, when the when the Taliban was the government of Afghanistan, they're mostly bureaucrats. They were like they were bureaucrats. They were. Uh, what uh, deputy secretaries and secretaries and uh, 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 blah blah blah, you know. However, once the Taliban government was dissolved, these guys fucking killed a lot of fucking people. They were they're uh, responsible for some couple thousand Afghan Afghani civilian deaths, like teachers and all that shit. Like you remember how. Uh, do you remember how when the uh, North, uh, the North Koreans, or was it the North Koreans, or was it the North Viet Vietnamese? I don't remember. Who were the ones that killed all the school teachers and shit? Uh, the Vietnamese. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, these guys were supposedly the hardcore of the hardcore, the creme de la creme, the the cream of the crop, the um. The big, huge nosed, huge beard, bearded, fucking faggot pieces of shit who would just walk up to anybody and shoot them in the back of the head, kind of guys, I guess, is what is what they're being presented as. I don't know, man. They've been captured since 2002, so I don't fucking know. Um. Uh, the only one that I've ever heard of was the old guy, Nuri, I think. The one with the... He had the uh, Duck Dynasty beard, uh, and he looked the skinniest. Um, I've heard of him, and I think he was the worst one. Uh, N-O-O-R-I, Nuri. Um, but um, other than that, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, on to the main topic at hand. Uh, if you haven't heard from, if you haven't heard by now, the dude that we traded these five guys for is a piece of fucking shit. He was a fucking deserter. He deserted, and he was a Taliban sympathizer. Apparently... Uh, when the story is going to come out, he was looking to join the Taliban, just like that Richards or Richardson guy in 2009 or that uh, or 2008 or whatever that was. Reed Richards or no? Wait a minute, Reed Richards. That's the Fantastic Four guy. Who was the who was the dude that who was the dude that wanted to? Um, defect to the Taliban. 
His name was Richards, right? Richardson? Richards? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, correspondence between this guy and his family will support, supports the idea that this, this little kid wanted to defect to the Taliban. Um, my personal opinion... Well, here, let me lay out the facts first. I have seen squad mates of his on television condemn him and and say, yes, this guy, he deserted. And he made it known that he wanted to desert. And that he left notes and a journal or something behind. And that he was a piece of shit that always talked about world peace or whatever. You know, whatever, whatever. Um, I believe what his squad mates said about him. Now, my personal opinion. My personal opinion being a being a war on terror quote unquote veteran the fuck ever. Does that even fucking mean anything anymore? It means I play Battlefield decently. Not 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 well, but you know, decently. Uh, uh my own personal opinion Well, I have a story. And my story is this. Um two thousand four we were in Kuwait. Um uh, don't remember where but we were getting ready to convoy up to Baghdad, uh, Camp Victory. It was a three-day convoy. We were about to leave. I think uh, our first stop was Iskandaria. I don't remember where that was. But uh, we were all accounted for, but except for one guy. Hmm. Couldn't find... The guy's name was um, Lampkin. L-A-M-P-K-I-N. Lampkin. Don't remember where he was from. All I remember is uh, what he looked like. He was about a six foot two, two hundred pound black guy. He always walked with a cane. However, the only time he ever walked seemed to walk with a cane was when um, officers or senior enlisted were around. Right? Hmm. Isn't that kind of strange? Hmm. So. Here we go. We're going we're going to getting ready. We're getting we we got 15 minutes to to uh, until we're leaving for to get to the border of Iraq and nobody can find uh Lampkin. Nobody can find him. He's missing. Oh, well. Shit. We can't leave without Lampkin. Shit. No, we can't leave without him. So a manhunt ensues and we find him. He's found uh 10 minutes later cowering in a porta potty he thought that if he squatted in a porta potty that they would just leave him there and then he'd come out of the porta potty at night and somehow they'd just send him back home you fucking piece of shit oh yeah oh by the way his cane his cane was fake he never had a limp he was faking his entire goddamn fucking profile because, oh shit, I might get sent out, I might get sent to war. Mm. Yeah, guess what? They fucking shoved him in the back of my fucking Humvee. And I, so I had to sit in the back with, and not only uh, watch for grenades and shit to be thrown in, I had to fucking, his, his life was in my hands too. I didn't like that. I really didn't like that. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, he let, he let us down. Um, we all knew he was faking. We all, and we all thought he was a piece of shit. And we didn't want our lives to be on the line because of that. They should have sent, they should have just fucking court-martialed him and sent him back home. Uh, give him a dishonorable discharge, send him back home. But no. When we found him, you know what they did? They fucking... Uh, zip tied his hands behind his behind his back, and threw him in the back of my Humvee. Now, 
This is 2004, mind you. We didn't have armor, so we what we did was tie sandbags to what we had was we had a two-seater Humvee, and then uh, what, what what was I in? I was in the I was in the survey section then. I wasn't the, I wasn't in the radar section yet. We were in the survey section. We had a a two-seater Humvee with the the bed in the back. It it looked like a pickup truck, kind of. No armor whatsoever. Um, this was in 2004. A lot of our Humvees didn't have armor on them. Not like these uh, tan tanks on wheels you see today. No. <laughs> I fucking sat on the back of that Humvee with sandbags tied to the little slats. <laughs> If we got freaking IED'd, no, oh, we were all dead. Are you serious? No. There's no way. Anyway. Um, we finally got him out of my truck, uh, I think after the first day. But, uh... Yeah, it, it, it's, um... It's one of those things. Um... This, um, this Bergdahl shit. Um... He he's one of these um he's one of these guys that they should have identified earlier but because like if if uh, a friend of mine come up to me and said the shit that Bergdahl was saying like oh he thinks uh he thinks the Afghani or the Taliban is right and he was like making like journal entries and shit and show me the journal about about wanting to uh, help the Afghani people or something, you know, you don't want to bring that up to your chain of command because you don't want to, you don't want to fuck the guy over. But uh, it's rare. It's you know, uh, this kind of shit is rare. I don't know, man. Um, it's uh, yeah this is a rare uh, this is a very rare case uh, uh where uh, where the guy the guy actually wants to actively join the Taliban which is what he fucking said by the way he wanted his, he's fucking told people he was looking for the Taliban to actually fucking actively join them and help them cuz he wanted to help the Afghani Afghani people this guy is going to get the death penalty and if he doesn't get the death penalty then there is something wrong um, this dude is responsible for the deaths of 16 other guys that went out looking for him. Um, they didn't, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been out on those missions if they weren't out looking for Bo Bergdahl, right? The dude that just happened to wander away and wanted to join the Taliban, right? And I, I, I understand why, I understand why the people are like, no. Don't call him a hero. He's not a hero. He's a deserter. And he should be fucking hung. And I, I understand why. But dude's gonna get a trial. I, I really think... I really think having, having his parents paraded out on Saturday, or whenever it was, um, in front of the president... Holy shit. Holy shit did you see what that fucking dad wrote. And they, they fucked up. No, I, th yeah, they fucked up, man. Um, they didn't know, they didn't know, and they fucked up. Um, I don't believe that he was a CIA asset anymore. I think he was a deserter. Um, I don't think his dad is a CIA asset. I think his dad is a fucking crazy person. Uh, his parents, to me, seem like hippies. Hippie, hippie fucking, um, hippie fucking yuppies, and they're the worst. Hippie yuppies are the worst. <sighs> but that's for another video. Um, yeah, uh, so my final verdict on this Bo Bergdahl shit is that, uh, yeah, the dude's gonna get court-martialed. He's not a sergeant. Number one, he's only a sergeant because of his time in. He's gonna get stripped of that real quick. 
Number two, he's not a hero. Uh, he's a deserter. Um, he's a private deserter. He's gonna be... They didn't, they didn't fucking kill Bradley Manning. They're not gonna... I don't know about this guy. Um, especially if they, if he gave the Taliban fighters material support, which, all indications, he did. Um, this guy might get the death penalty, if not life in prison. Um, and for the President of the United States to, and, and, uh, his chief advisor to, to say that he's a war hero is embarrassing. It's embarrassing for us, all of us. And that's all I gotta say about that, and, um, that's pretty much where I'm gonna stop this video, I think.